All right, I've got 6.30. We'll get started. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the day. And God, again, I thank you just for your word. God, I thank you for our Wednesday night Bible study. And Lord, it does. It just kind of gives us a boost uh, through the rest of the week. So God, be with the reading of the word. And uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, we can uh, find wisdom. Lord, I know uh, we just we never arrive spiritually. Uh, there's always more that we can do. There's more that we can read, more, more prayer in our lives. So God, it's tonight we look at that. I, I pray, Lord, that we would just uh, maybe find something that maybe we uh, got a little slack in, and Lord, we'll just pick up that slack and, and just get back to doing what you ask us to do. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You have your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We will be uh, studying tonight about finding God's wisdom. Finding God's wisdom. And there's four points here uh, that I want to give you. Uh, number one, you find God's wisdom through studying God's Word. Studying God's Word. The second one in finding God's wisdom through trusting God's perfect will. I hope you know there's a, God has a perfect will for your life. He really does. He has something, uh, you know, and, and we all get sidetracked, okay? There's nobody that stays on the track perfectly running, you know, uh, but uh, we can truly, I, and it's the best feeling in the world, world, folks, to be in the center of God's will. And number three, through honoring God in giving. Through honoring God in giving, and we'll talk about that. And then number four, through understanding God's discipline. Understanding God's discipline. And uh, folks, you know, discipline is real, okay? Uh, just as we disciplined our children, uh, we, as God's children, sometimes uh, need to be disciplined also. So in Proverbs chapter 3, and, and I want to say right off the bat, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Okay, knowledge is more like book smart. Knowledge is knowing a lot. A lot knowledge is studying. And folks, I'm, I'm, education is important. I want you to know that. But just because you have a, a great education doesn't necessarily mean you have wisdom. Okay, uh, to have wisdom, you, you, you need to be a Christian. Okay, you need God in your life, all right? And, and I did. I, I went back to college when I was 50 years old, and uh, it took me seven years to get a degree at Oklahoma Baptist University, and I am so glad I did that. I really did. It's really helped me. Uh, two things. It was in history, the history. Uh, even in my preaching, I realized I wasn't given enough background information in, in some of the history of the text that I was preaching. And then the other way, the other thing, it gave me, uh, you know, skills uh, for writing outlines. And uh, I, I thank God for that. But wisdom, let me say this right off the bat, comes from God. Okay, godly wisdom, it comes from God. So looks, let's look at through studying God's Word. Proverbs 3, verse 1, my son. Okay, and again, you know, you see son talking about not, you know, biological, but it's his children. Uh, we are his children. And, and it doesn't mean it excludes daughters, okay? Don't, you know, don't, don't take that wrong. It is any of God's children. Do not forget my law. And we, of course, know the law was the first thing. If you look uh, in the laws, the first five books of the Bible there, uh, you can see God's law written all through those. But let your heart keep my command. And folks, I am telling you, Wisdom also comes from the heart, all right? Sometimes the mind, and, and the, the battle's in the mind, okay? That's why uh, it's important that we put the Word of God, not just into our minds, but into our hearts also, okay? And part of that uh, wisdom is discernment. That's knowing when something is right and knowing when something's wrong. That's knowing when something's not adding up or knowing that, you know, man, I probably shouldn't do this. You know, one of my life uh, verses, you know, and, and the thought is, 
you know, avoid all appearances of evil. If I even think it might be wrong, I need to avoid that. So the Word of God, and here's the key, folks. How do you know what's right? It's the Word of God. How do you know what's wrong? The Word of God. If you pour the Word of God in you, then it's going to be in you so that when those things that are wrong come up, that Holy Spirit is going to say, hey, you don't need to be doing that. Okay, and, we, we, and that's part of growing in the Lord. All right, we must spend time in the Word of God if we are going to grow as a Christian. You cannot ignore the Bible and grow in the Lord like the way you need to grow. So every day, matter of fact, I, I mentioned this because of Psalms 1, you know, meditate on it day and night. I begin my day with the Word of God, and I end my day with the Word of God. All right? I do the daily, uh, what is our daily bread, I do that in the mornings. And then I have a Max Lucado uh, uh, devotion book that I do at night. And so I start my day in the Word. I end my day in the Word. For the length of days and long life and peace they will give you. What are the deals? What's the blessings that you get? Length of days, you'll live a long life. And more than that, peace. The peace of God. Folks, everyone wants peace in their life. Everyone wants peace. And we live in a chaotic world, all right? And, and that time, because, you know, some people that, you know, bookworms, all right, I like to read, but I don't love to read, if that makes any sense. Okay, I like to read, but bookworms, they, they want to curl up with a book, and, you know, they could do that for hours and hours and hours, all right? Could you imagine what happened if we did that with the Word of God? Because even Proverbs, which we are reading, it's the book of wisdom. It's the book of wisdom. And it gives us peace. The Word of God gives us peace. Verse 3, and let not mercy and truth forsake you. Folks, truth is in the Word of God. Mercy is in the Word of God. God extends His mercy to us, so we need to extend mercy to others. The truth, Jesus Himself said, I am the way the truth and the life. You want to know truth? Get in the Word of God. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Why are they? What, what is he talking about? Reminders. Reminders. I wear this bracelet every day of my life. Every day of my life. On my days off, I wear this bracelet. And it simply says, believe. Believe. What's belief? Folks, that's faith. I want to exercise faith every day of my life. And that is a reminder. And the Word of God is a reminder of how we need to think, how we need to act, and we are pouring wisdom into our lives with that. Verse 4, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Folks, I want the favor of God in my life. I want the favor of God. And you find the favor of God when you seek wisdom and high esteem what does that mean? Respect from God, and more, I mean, not more than that, but also respect from men, okay? I want people, when they look at me, not so I can brag on it, but I, I, you know, people have asked me, you know, what do you want on your tombstone? You know, and a lot of people want different things, but if they, if they decide to write, man of God, I, I would just be thrilled with that, okay? And how do we be? How, how do we come, become men and women of God? Through wisdom, through studying God's Word. Look at Proverbs 4. Just look at the next chapter. Hear my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Folks, there's good doctrine, and obviously there's bad doctrine. So we need to know what the Bible says. Folks, doctrine is important. It's important. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. I thank God that my parents took us to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night. We did not, we did not miss church. Why? Because that's where the Word of God is preached. That's where the Word of God is taught. Look at verse 5, get wisdom, exclamation point. The Bible tells us to get it. Don't be satisfied where you are. 
Don't be satisfied. Get wisdom. Get understanding. That understanding is understanding the ways and will of God. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Man, all the letters in the New Testament that are read, we need to read those over and over and over again. Why? Because that's Jesus' words. It's His words coming out of His mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is what they're talking about. It is the principal thing. What's, what's the principle? The main thing. The main thing, wisdom. And how do we get wisdom? From the Word of God. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place it uh, on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Folks, we need to seek wisdom. Number two, through studying God's Word, through trusting God's perfect will. Look at verse 5, and in Proverbs, this is probably the most quoted two verses in the book of Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Trusting means, you know, uh, turning your whole life over to God. Trusting with all your heart. Two words that I wrote down here in my notes. Total surrender. Total surrender is trusting. Trusting God with your life. Trusting God with your heart. Trusting God with your finances. Trusting God with your relationships. Trusting God in, in, in all that you do. Trust in the Lord. And lean not to your own understanding. Folks, there's a lot of things in life I don't understand. I don't understand why, you know, uh, you know uh, maybe a young a baby has to die or a young child has to die of cancer. I don't understand that. So I cannot trust. Folks, truthfully, I cannot trust my feelings. Okay? Because feelings come and feelings go. I have to trust in God's wisdom that He is on the throne, that He knows what He's doing. And He knows, God, he knows the perfect, what God's perfect will for my life is. Folks, I'm just telling you, there's only two people that know God's perfect will for your life. It's God and it's you. I cannot, I cannot tell you God's will for your life. I can guide you. I can tell you to read the Word. And, and I'm just telling you, folks, you cannot find God's will for your life apart from the Word of God. You, it, will, it will show you. It will stick out. It will speak to you. It will uh, burden you, the, the will. It will, it will lead you. It will guide you. God's will for your life. And you can't find it if you don't trust in Him. You have to trust in God to find His will. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. You can't give, you know, even 90% of yourself to God. Okay? You sure don't need to give just half of yourself to God. In all your ways, every area of your life, put it in God's hands. Trust God and He shall direct your path. That's what God's will is. It's His direction. It's Him speaking to you. It's Him enlightening you. Folks, I read some scripture over and over and over again. I, there's some scriptures I've read a hundred times, and, and sometimes, I don't know if it, this happens to you, but a, just a different word shows up, and that word really speaks to me in that time that I... It may just be one word. Do you realize one word can change a whole sentence? And that's why we have to get in God's Word. And one word can change your life. It can change the direction of your life. Folks, I said it earlier and I'll say it again. The best place to be is in the will of God. Knowing that you are pleasing God. Knowing this is your purpose in life. Knowing this is why God put you on this earth. Knowing that's why He's kept you on this earth. I promise you, when I was young, I had no intention of being a preacher. Zero. All right? Till I was probably 18 years old, I never even thought about it. I wanted to play professional baseball for the Cincinnati Reds. And that's another story I've told, so we won't go there. But it was not. My freshman year in college, 
I hit a double off the wall. I rounded second base. The base come out from under me and my ankles snapped. And I thought my world had crashed down. But you know what had actually happened? God did what He did so I wouldn't be a professional baseball player. Because He knew God's will for my life. He knew the money would get to me. He would knew all that stuff. All right. He knew all that stuff. And while at the point, I did not understand it. Matter of fact, uh, we weren't on speaking terms for about a year after that, me and the Lord. And I'm ashamed of it. I really am. But I'm simply saying, He knows what's best for you and you will find it in the Word of God. Look at verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Folks, in your own eyes. He knows better than you. Life's not about what you want to do. It's about what God wants you to do. Fear the Lord. Fear is respect. Depart from evil. Great advice. And it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That doesn't mean if you're sickly, God's punishing you. Folks, I'm just saying I had cancer. I know what it's like to have cancer. I'm a cancer survivor. All right? That's not what it says. It's just saying that peace that I spoke of in, in the first part, in, in verse 1, that peace is laying your head on your pillow at night and thinking, man, you know, me and God had a good day today. We had a good day today. Psalm 37, just flip back to Psalm 37 if you would with me. Psalm 37, talking about trusting God. You can find wisdom and trust God's wisdom and trust in Him. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. What's feeding? Hey, we don't skip many meals. All right? You can look at us and you can tell we don't. And, and just as we take nutrition in, we need to feed on God's Word. It's the bread of life. God's Word is living water. God's Word is uh, you know, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to do good. We need to dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. His faithfulness. Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. What is the desire of your heart? Folks, it's that thing that you have a passion for. It's that thing that you were created for. And we all have that as Christians. He has given you a spiritual gift. He has given you something that is going to satisfy you, something that's going to make you not just happy. Folks, happy talks about happenstance, circumstances. As long as everything's going good, we're happy. Joy comes from within. Joy comes from the heart, not the head. All right? I mean, even in, in joking, we can think of a good joke and we can be happy, but I mean, the next day we can't even remember the joke that we laughed at the day before. Joy comes from the heart. And that's what it means. We have that joy and we're doing what we want to be doing and what God has told us we need to do. I read a statistic once that said the American worker, 71% said that if they could do something else, okay, and make the same money, they would do that. That means three-fourths of the people that are working don't really like their job, and they don't really like what they're doing. Folks, I don't want to go through life dreading my job, and I call it punching the clock. I don't want to punch the clock. Folks, there's a whole lot more to life than punching a clock. It's being satisfied. It's, it's knowing who you are. It's knowing what God has designed you to be. It's knowing that you're pleasing God and, you, and, and you're glorifying God. Commit your way into the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Three times He says, trust, trust, trust. Keep trusting in the Lord and in His perfect will. And also, folks, here's where we miss His perfect will. is His perfect timing. All right? There's a lot of times God's, you know, yes, no, and he, he, He'll say, wait. Okay? He'll just say, wait. And we sometimes miss the will of God because we will not be patient and we will not wait. 
So we find God's wisdom through studying God's Word, from trusting His perfect will, and through honoring Him in giving. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My parents always taught me this. Every since I was a little kid. And I remember, you know, uh, you know, they dress you. You know, you know how moms are sometimes. You know, like at Easter, my mom would put these colored shorts on me, okay, with some white shirt and a bow tie. And, you know, you know. And again, looking back, I, at the time I didn't think nothing about it. You know, but I'm simply saying, from that, you know, I, I was in preschool, so I, I, I might have been three. You know, not more than four years old. And you know what we did? Every Sunday, the last thing before we went out the door, there was four of us kids, and my dad would sit there, and I remember the first thing we got was a dime. We'd take a dime to church every Sunday. And then as I got older, I noticed we got to quarters. We'd take quarters to church every Sunday. I mean, we didn't have, we weren't employed, we wasn't doing, you know, but what were they t- teaching us? They were teaching us that giving is what they did. And then it got to be a dollar. Now that's where temptation came in. All right. I mean, when you when you're a great school kid and you see that dollar and you've been in the store and you're thinking, man, that'll buy some candy there. All right. And again, I was lost and I was young and I I'm not saying I spent my you know my parents' time. I'm simply saying the temptation was there. But what were they doing? They were instilling me the importance of giving. Let me tell you something right off the bat. And folks, we have a giving church, you know. But it's, it's this section. We need to cover every bit of it. All right? Bottom line, you can't outgive God. You just can't do it. All right? You want the blessings of God in your life? You give Him your first fruits. Okay? That first fruits. Uh, matter of fact, go, go with me to Malachi. Malachi, I want to show you in the Scripture what it says in giving. I know most of you know this, but I want you to know Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Somebody said, man, I'm not going to rob God. I would not knowingly rob God. Yet you have robbed me. Okay, this is, this is God speaking, okay? But you say, in what have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. The tithes is 10% of your income. 10% of your income. That is a tithe to the Lord. And what do your tithes do, folks? It helps pay for the lights. It helps pay for this building. It helps pay, uh, you know, for our worship. And, and, and it helps pay for ministries. And I am so glad, I am so glad that people, I'm just telling you, we have a giving church. I am amazed at how giving this church is. Now look at verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. What is he talking about? That means the local church. Your tithe belongs to the local church. And then you have an offering. And what's an offering? Anything you give above a tithe. For instance, if you wanted to send a a tithe to the Billy Graham Ministries or to the Samaritan Purse, you can do that. But if you want to give an offering to the church, you can do that. If we take a love offering or if we're trying to uh, raise money for for a mission project or, or for the food bank or this... That that comes from your offering, okay? According to the word of God, that there may be food in my house. Now, here's God. Try me on this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out on you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. What's he saying? Let me paraphrase this for you. God's saying, I double dog dare you. I double dog dare you. You give me a tithe and an offering, and you will be blessed. Folks, we're blessed. We are a blessed people, and we are a blessed church. Why? Because people are faithful in giving. They're faithful, and you you see God's wisdom in that. Look at verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer. This is what you get, all right? All right, spiritual warfare. Man, he's there. Devil's there. He's there. It's not saying nothing bad will happen to you. That's not what he's saying. He's simply saying, you be faithful. You honor me in your giving. 
and I will defend you so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the fields. Folks, you have to understand in the biblical times, fruit and vegetables and all that, that was their way of life. Okay? That was what they ate with. It was, you know, cattle and stock and all of that. He said, I will bless you if you'll do this. And look at verse 12. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be delightful, uh, a delightful land, the Lord says. So open up the windows of heaven. Folks, I am telling you, God will bless you if you will be faithful with your tithes and offering. And you can find God's wisdom through that. You know what? Uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians Corinthians 1 says, why does God bless us? So that we can be a blessing to others. Folks, I'm telling you, I will never be anywhere. If If I am dressed and my wallet is in my pocket, I will have cash in hand. Say, well, what are you wearing? Somebody might knock you in the head. I didn't say I have a lot of cash in my hand. But I always want to have cash. Whereas if I walk by somebody and God says, bless them. Man, I blessed you. Why don't you bless them? And I don't stop at every corner and give money out to everybody that I see. Folks, I discern that. I ask God, all right, is this, is this guy real? Is this, is this real? And when he says, roll your window down, I roll my window down and I hand it out and I keep on going. But we are blessed to be a blessing to others. The last thing, the last thing, number four, through understanding God's discipline. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor, to de- nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. You have to understand there's two kinds of discipline in you. There's God's discipline, all right, and there's personal discipline in your life. God's discipline is when you do something wrong and he says, you know what, you're going to get a whooping for this. And again, I, he don't bend us over a knee, but we, we know when the wrath of God is on us. We know when, when, when you know, we feel like, man, I can't get a break, I can't do this, I can't do that. You, you just know that as a Christian. But the opposite side, the personal discipline, is having the discipline to do these things. Okay? The discipline to study His Word, to trust in His perfect will, to honor Him in giving, and understand what discipline is for. My mom basically was the most disciplined. She did most of the discipline in our house. And mom was soft. I'll just tell you right now, she was soft. There were times that she whipped me, and I just acted like I was crying because I knew she would quit if I cried. All right? And I remember one time, or more than one time, she just said, you know, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you. And I said, well, just quit, and we'll both be happy. All right? Nobody likes to be disciplined. All right? Nobody. But folks, the discipline of God, He is doing that for our own good. You realize that kids, when they get up to the youth, really Proverbs is a teenage book, folks. It, it, is, it was written to write uh, uh, to, to, for young people. And when I say young people, I'm talking anywhere from 12 years old to 24 years old. All right? Because some people mature faster than others. Some people get it faster than others. But to be able to recognize the discipline of God in our life, And I'm telling you, here's what God wants to hear from you when you are disciplined. God, I was wrong. God, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. That's what he's looking for. When we get out of line, when we say, you know, it it breaks my heart when I hear this. I know it's wrong, but, and then they go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, that's, that's not discipline in your personal life. If you know it's wrong, don't do it. And folks, the chastening of the Lord comes also from the Holy Spirit. You don't have to say, well, I didn't know it was wrong. You, know, you knew it was wrong or not. The Holy Spirit would tell you that it's wrong. And I'm telling you, now, y'all, I spoke of my dad many times. 
and he was a good Christian man, he really was, but he, he did not play when it comes to discipline. Okay, my mom spanked me, my dad whooped me. And there is a difference, okay? Because when my dad whooped me, he did not play around, you know. I was glad when he looked and had a belt on. I thought, all right, I'm going to get whooped with the belt. Because if he couldn't find his belt, he just started looking around for something, okay? And folks, I say that not to put my dad down, to say God's not that way, folks. God's discipline sometimes is gentle, Okay, God's discipline, hopefully, most of the time is obvious. But the reason he has disciplined us is so that we will do the right thing the next time. Folks, we're, we're negotiating with kids way too much. These little kids, I'll give you a timeout right on your behind with what my dad would say. I'll give you a timeout, all right? And, and I'm not talking about anger spanking. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. All right, why do you think this part of your anatomy is some of the biggest part on you? Because that's where you drive, the proverb says it'll drive that foolishness out of us. We don't need negotiation, folks. We need people to understand that there are, there are consequences to what they do. And you just, you know, if all you do is negotiate and talk to a kid, I'm just telling you later on, they're going to do exactly what they want to do. And, and just like us, we need the discipline of God in our lives. Two more scriptures, real quick. Hebrews 12, go with me. Hebrews 12. My son, do not despise chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receives. Hey, it, it doesn't thrill God to chasten you, folks. He's not setting up with a big smile on his face. You have probably broken his heart. If And, and that's the, one of the dumbest things I ever did was when I was 14 years old, and I don't even want to say what I did, but when I got home, I, I mean, I literally was in my bed shaking, waiting for my father to get home. And I just kept waiting. I heard him come in. I heard him sit down to eat. Because I was told to go to my room and you don't get up from that bed till I... And folks, I was 14 years old. We're not talking about a 10-year-old here. And you know what he did? He ignored me for almost three hours. I'll never forget that. And here's what he did. He walked in my room and he simply said, Son, you, 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 I am ashamed of what you did today. I'm just totally ashamed. You have embarrassed our family and you have embarrassed me. He walked out of the room. I'm like, you know, I, I, I didn't even, I was stunned. I, I'll just be honest with you. I was stunned. And do you know that sin that I did that day? I have never done it again in my life. Okay? Why? You know, it, it worked for me. Why, does my, why did my father say that? Why did he do that? Because he loved me. And he knew that if I stayed in that pattern that I was going to do, that I was going to get a lot of trouble as I was growing up. Okay? Hey, in, in the nursery, I was considered hyperactive. When I got older child, I was considered ornery. All right? As I grew, I, we'd better move on. All right, verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom the Father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. What is he saying? Man, if you can get away with sin, if it doesn't bother you, if there are no consequences to your sin, you better check your salvation out. You better check it out. All right? It doesn't mean, okay, any sin, you know, I, I, you can't just char characterize. Okay, a lot of times we call them the big five sins, and I won't even, we don't have time to even go over those or anything. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about sin. Sin. All right? We should know every time we sin. We should know that. And the last thing, that's God's chastening, personal uh, discipline. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9, 
Verse 24, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. What is he saying? Be fair. Be honest in all that you do. Now, they do not do it for a uh, perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. They do it for a perishable crown, and we an imperishable crown. That means that crown that, we cannot, that cannot be taken from us. All right, Folks, I could not tell you how many trophies I got for playing slow pitch softball. I, I mean, we, I had boxes and boxes of them uh, when Lori and I got married, all right? What do they do? They sit on your mantle and collect dust. What do they do? They go up in your attic and rot, all right? Therefore, I thus run, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who just beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. What is he saying? We have, if you are going to find wisdom, you have to discipline yourself in all areas of your life. Bottom line. Okay? All areas. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your word. God, thank you for uh, just the wisdom, God. And again, Lord, I just pray if there's just some reminder tonight, if there's something that we caught tonight that we need to be doing, Lord, if there's something that we're not doing, God, I pray that we would do it, Lord. Or that we would uh, take your word seriously. Or Lord, that we would just stay in the center of your will. That we would honor you in giving. And Lord, uh, just have discipline in our own lives. God, I want to be wise. I really do. I want the wisdom of God in my life. I don't want to be fooled. I don't, I don't want Satan to lie to me. And I don't want to, I, I need to know what the word says. He can quote the word, but he leaves words out. And God, we need to be ready for those things. Uh, the attacks of the devils, those fiery darts. And God, the only way that we can do that is through wisdom. Wisdom in relationships. R- wisdom in finances. Wisdom in, in just, uh, you know, education and who we are and and what we're about and invocation, wisdom and vocation. All these things of life, we need wisdom. So God, uh, you say to ask. We don't need to ask amiss. Lord, we need to ask you to give us wisdom. And God, we'll be just uh, careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.